Good evening, most warmly welcome to our forum of tonight. We all feel very honored to welcome Professor Thomas Tsai among us from the Faculty of Religious Studies and Philosophy, and also our beloved Dean, Father Cyril Law. Give them a warm welcome. <laughs> Here we will feature some key research projects of the Macau Ricci Institute with our forums and also in the next issue of the Macau Ricci Institute Journal. One of these key research projects is focused on inculturation of Christian faith in China. So how is Christian faith taking roots in China? What does it mean for the key theological concepts? So these are highly demanding tasks. And so as the Americans say, we need to pull out our big guns. So here we are with our big guns. And I'm really very pleased that uh, Professor Thomas Tsai, who has his, done his PhD research on Robert Bellarmine, uh, is committed to this very important research on Matteo Ricci and also Giulio Aleni. Tonight, we are focusing on a key topic, focused on overcoming self and overcoming nature. Meaning, shall we just go with the flaw, as uh, Taoism suggests, or are there some restrictions we have to make listening to the very inspiring teaching of Diego de Pandoja and Giulio de Aleni. So without further ado, I give the floor uh, to Professor Thomas Tsai and really thank you very much that you kind of initiate a very important stream of research uh, in the Macau Ricci Institute in cooperation with the Institute for Memory and Identity. Good evening. <clears throat> This uh, presentation, uh, as Father Stefan just mentioned, that will be focused on um, Diego uh, Pantoja and uh, uh, Giulio Aleni, uh, because last June I gave a presentation on Matteo Ricci with a focus on his teaching on the goodness of human nature. Uh, this uh, presentation this evening can be seen as a continuation of the last uh, uh, presentation. In this presentation, um, I will mention three uh, Jesuits, but with focus on the last two. The first Jesuit uh, is Matteo Ricci, uh, the big name. Ricci died in Beijing, and he has a very close collaborator, uh, Diego de Pandoja, uh, he died in 1618 in Macau, probably uh, in, some, in some places near St. Paul, not far from us today. Uh, the third Jesuit I will mention, I will mention is uh, Giulio Aleni, uh, an Italian. <clears throat> uh, he died in Fujian in 1649. So this is a short uh, uh, introduction to three Jesuits I, would, I will mention today. Uh, here are the three pictures of these uh, three uh, Jesuits. Uh, the Jesuits. <clears throat> we start from uh, the idea of overcoming self. We say self-overcoming. In Ricci, he mentioned the importance of overcoming self in moral cultivation. Uh, this topic, I touched this topic in my last uh, presentation because for him, uh, the goodness of nature would not be sufficient, particularly when we consider that our current human nature is ruined by Adam's sin. Okay? So that's why he called for the moral, uh, call for moral cultivation through practicing virtues. Now, in his Catechism, uh, the two meaning of the Lord of Heaven, 
particularly in chapter seven and the chapter eight, he discussed this topic of overcoming self. The case, uh, the, uh, the case we can take here is, for example, he mentioned the convenience of celibacy and mentioned overcoming self in his discussion of celibacy. And he insisted, insisted that to enter the service of God, one must overcome self's desire, as we can see in the case of celibacy. We see here Rich, uh, Rich mentioned um, overcoming self, but actually he didn't say anything about overcoming human nature. He avoided this topic and his um, colleague, Diego de Pantoja, actually we'll see later, um, touched this topic of whether we should overcome nature. Okay. Before we look at uh, Pantoja's uh, uh, discussion of overcoming nature, we take a look at his idea of overcoming self. Now, um, the same as similar to uh, Ricci, uh, Pantoja also mentioned overcoming self. We know there is a famous book of him called The Seven Victories, uh, Qi Ke. It talks about how we can overcome seven deadly sins by seven virtues. So as we can see from this topic, it is natural for him to say that there is a need for us to overcome ourselves, to overcome our desire through virtues. So we see here, Rich's idea is also reflected in Pantoja's Qi Ke, his work on overcoming sins. In the case of Aleni, uh, he reminds his Chinese converts to subdue oneself again and again. In Chinese, a ke or a yu ke. You must subdue yourself, overcome yourself again and again. In, the, in your practice of seven victories in order to reach the state of having few sins. Now, this is a brief uh, summary of the use of overcoming self in these three Jesuits. Uh, we see here that there's no problem for these Jesuits to say overcoming self when they meet Chinese literati or Chinese scholars. Now, the next thing is why when they face Chinese people, they can um, use this phrase, overcoming self, because they are very similar idea in Confucian tradition, in the Confucian tradition. Now, uh, in Lun Yu, um, Confucius said that to master oneself and the return to, to priority is humanity. In Chinese. So here we see in Confucius, he already used the term. Uh, 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 sometimes the translator translates Keji as to master oneself. But anyway, uh, it's, uh, it's still possible to uh, translate as overcome oneself, as we can see in the commentary tradition, in Confucian commentary tradition. Now, in Han period, in Han Dai, uh, Confucius' words, uh, 课, 课, is understood as 约, means constraint or control. And the 几 is, was understood as the body. So for Confucians in this period, 课几 is no other than to control the body. But this idea will, exp will, 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 will see some, will be transformed a little bit in Sui Dai in the uh, 7th century by a person like, scholar like Liu Xuan. He made a hermeneutical development by interpreting Ke as Shen, overcome. So we now see that in Han period, Ke means control, Yue, but in, according to Liu Xuan, this Ke means overcome. Now the meaning of overcome can be it is more was uh, is more emphasized here in the case of Liu Xuan in the seventh century, and Ji is also 
give a dimension of lust. So he, according to Liu Xuan, Ji is not just the body, but the body with lust. So in this system, Ke Ji can be equal, is equal, uh, equals to, to overcome bodily lust. So we see here the transition from to control the body to overcome bodily lust in the Confucian tradition. In Song Dynasty, uh, Zhu Xi, the most important Confucian uh, philosopher, he thought that self should be understood as the selfish desire of the body, uh, which is not far from Liu Xuan's tradition. So for Zhu Xi, a, a, a tension exists between human desire and the principle of heaven. There is always a struggle between desire and the principle of heaven. Or we put in Chinese is Tianli and the Ren Yu, uh, the, uh, the struggle between these two things. Now for Zhu Xi, Ke, Ke Ji means to overcome the selfish desire of the body. So we can see that in the neo confucian tradition, okay, the meaning of self is not just the body, it's about desire, which comes from our body. And this desire must, is also negative. It's selfish desire. Okay. So in Chinese, he says that 生之私欲, the selfish desire of the body. Now we see here how uh, Ke Ji overcome master self, overcome or master oneself is understood in the Confucian tradition. And we, if we compare this Confucian tradition with what said by uh, Ricci, the Pantoja, and the Aleni, we see there is no big difference. And for this reason. In the annotated bi bibliography of the four treasures, in Chinese we call Su Hu Quan Shu Zong Mu Ti Yao, which is edited by, uh, by, by scholars in China, Qing Dynasty, they give an evaluation on Pantoja's Qi Ke, on Pantoja's work on how to overcome uh, things. They said that the moral practice presented in it is reasonable, although its end, that is God, is ridiculous. Okay? So they see the value of overcoming self in the Jesuits' work, which is compatible with the Confucian understanding of overcoming self in Ming Dynasty. Now, what is the next question is, what is the intellectual background of the Jesuits when they say that we should overcome ourselves? In, in Clocetta, uh, this is an Italian Jesuit uh, who lived in China in the next, uh, in, in, in the 17th century. In Du Zhe, I think the Chinese name, he translated uh, Ren Yu. And the transla his translation of Confucius words, Ke Ji, as Vincele Se Ipsum, literally, very, very close, or we say the same meaning as overcome self. Vincele se ipsum. Now, where in the Jesuit, or we say Catholic tradition, where does this phrase of Vincele se ipsum come from? Now, it appears in St. Ignatius of Loyola's spiritual exercises, when he discussed the way by which man is led to conquer himself and conduct a life that is free from harmful attachments we should free from harmful attachments. Of course, they related to the selfish desires, or we put in a, more, uh, in, a, in a way which is more close to early modern Catholicism is to free from the world, from devil. Now in a Roman Catechism, in the Roman Catechism, which uh, was published in 1566, it mentioned that the society of all the faithful still dwelling on earth is called militant. Why Christians in this world are called militant? Why they are called militant who are engaged in battles? Okay? Because it wages eternal war with those 
implacable enemies. Of, you, are fight, you should fight with enemies. What are these enemies? They are the world, the flesh, and the devil. So the flesh and the world uh, and the devil is also related to the selfish desires. Because according to the scholastic theology, devil cannot uh, tempt the person directly. They, can, they always make some illusions on the faculties of our souls. Then they tempt it. So that is another way we see that um, the idea of vincelles e ipsum uh, in the Catholic world is close to the Confucian tradition and the paved the way for the Jesuit to use the term of uh, overcome himself when they meet Chinese people. And we see here, there's a concordia. Yeah. Confucian overcome selfish desires and seeking perfection in the Christian traditions can reach a kind of agreement in the topic of overcoming self. Now, it looks everything is fine, okay? Jesuits can find a way to preach um, gospel uh, according to the phrase or the terms used by Chinese, well, uh, by Chinese as well. But a new problem came when the Pantoha wrote his treatise on the origin of the human race. This work was written in 1610, in the year of 1610, exactly the same year Matteo Rich died in Beijing. Now, in this uh, work, in this work, the Pantoha, Pantoha wrote this paragraph. Uh, when I, 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 I wrote my article, uh, I found that this is, is, is a headache to translate such kind of uh, text into Chinese, uh, no, no, in, in, into, into English. Uh, anyway, we see here that uh, I have, highlight, I have highlighted the, 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 the sentence which is uh, essential to our understanding uh, uh, of the topic. Uh, the second line, So he mentioned Xing here, not just the Keqi. Okay? We not just overcome the bodily desire, we also need to overcome our human nature. And why? That means if we would like to uh, use our human nature to, un to understand the principle of heaven, okay? we would be like a blind, blind people. If we would like to do good according to our human nature, we would fall. Why he said this? Because he looked at the question of how we cannot act good always from a perspective of, of original sin. So when he see this topic from the perspective that original sin has wounded our nature, it would be very nat uh, natural for him to make the conclusions like and where is the intellectual source of this idea? At least we can trace back to Thomas Aquinas yeah. uh, because Thomas Aquinas' summa was highly appreciated by Jesuits in the early modern period. Apart from the Bible, they always read the summa and use, as, use it as a textbook. For example, uh, Robert Bellarmine, he taught theology in the Jesuit house in Leuven. The textbook he used and he commented on uh, was the Summa Theology. So you see, uh, the, 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 the teaching of Thomas Aquinas was read by the Jesuits in the early modern period and appreciated, even though they did not follow Thomas Aquinas in every topic. But here, I think uh, that uh, the idea given by the Pantoha, uh, Pantoha here comes from Thomas Aquinas because for Thomas Aquinas, when he, talk, when he, he discussed the effects of Adam's sin, he said that the corruption of human nature causes the disorder between the reason and the lower parts of the soul. 
So the reason we use to understand knowledge, understand to, to catch truth. So it corresponds to Mingli, right? And the law, uh, and, and in the Summa, uh, the first part, the second part, the second uh, question 85, article three, St. Thomas illustrated how the wounds of original sin inflicted human reason and the will and diminished their capacity to do good. The original sin not only have a, a not only has a negative effect on our reason, it will also if, uh, have a bad uh, consequence on our will, which related to the, the choice to do good, like here, yi xin shan zi lu chue. Now, we, we can have um, a deeper looking at this uh, topic. And in another place of the same book, um, he mentioned that, uh, he, he, he said that, uh, uh, he used the word xing bing. That's the 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 of human nature. the 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 caused by original sin. Chen yu xie e, that means we always choose evil things. That's about choice, about the will. Yeah. So if we read these texts in light of St. Thomas' teaching, we can find that Thomas' idea of wounds of nature uh, is actually repeated here. Now, according to St. Thomas' teaching on the wounds of nature, the soul is left destitute of their proper order, and consequently, it is no longer naturally directed to virtue. So we cannot practice virtue. We cannot do good things, repeat and, and, and repeat and repeat again. This destitution is not simply the loss of original justice, um, because according to scholastic theology, uh, original sin related caused by the loss of original justice. The perfect state enjoyed by Adam at the beginning of his existence was totally lost. But this destitution um, is not simply the loss of original justice, but also the supernatural gifts. The gifts received by Adam also lost by him. And it affects the natural inclination to virtue. Okay, so we you are not because the harmony which existed in us, uh, not in us, in Adam, uh, before his fall, does, uh, does, does not continue to exist. So, as the offering of Adam, we would not have the natural inclination to virtue. And it reflects in the idea, uh, it reflects in the text like, uh, our evil uh, thought cannot be totally distinguished. Uh, Thomas Aquinas also uh, talked about uh, four powers of the soul, how these four powers of the soul are, are, are we say, are weakened by original sin, uh, like the reason, the will, the irascible, and the con concusable are all weakened in our current human nature. And in the case of the reason, yeah, the wound of ignorance, so that we have always have the ignorance and it affects our knowledge of God and the truth. So in, 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 in this life, we do not always seek truth. Um, this is the idea of St. Thomas. And of course, um, <clears throat> uh, we, we, we do not always uh, seek our knowledge of God as well. And in the will, there's a malice which inclines humans to choose the object other than the highest good. This is the choice. Uh, so that is cheng yu xie e. And the wound of weakness and concupiscence diminish human strength to resist obstacle virtue and indulge humans in immediate pleasure. Now, all these, are, uh, these uh, ideas from Tom Thomas, I think, or can help us to see uh, why um, 
the Pantoja proposed the idea of uh, uh, the, uh, the, the disease of human nature here and to propose that we should overcome this disease and overcome our human nature. Now, in this case, um, for uh, Pantoja, the ultimate cause of our indulgence in selfish desire can only be traced to the wounds of human nature. So why we cannot always choose good? Why we cannot always uh, know truth, to seek a truth? Because it's not just about the desire. It's not the desire, not uh, we have the desire, we should to conquer it, to overcome it. But ultimately, it is because our human nature is fundamentally spoiled. There is a disease in our human nature. So that's why he used, he said that fei tu yin xi yu er. That's not about the habit, okay? Not about whether we really want to practice virtue. No, it's ultimately about human nature. The root of all these problems is our wounded human nature. So what we can do is to overcome our nature. Although he didn't specify that this nature is our current nature, because according to early modern theologians, early modern Catholic theologians, the states of human nature can be divided into different um, ones. Usually they divide it into the perfect, uh, the perfect state of human nature, that is the, the, the nature of original justice. That is the nature enjoyed by Adam when he was created. The second nature uh, is, is um, the ruined human nature, the human nature which we have uh, when Adam lost original justice. The third nature can be the nature of um, the, the restored nature, that is the nature which will be restored by Christ through his grace. The fourth can be a pure nature, state of pure nature, which is the imagined nature, uh, imagined state of nature, which helps us to see how perfect we were created. Anyway, uh, uh, for the, the Pantoja didn't mention the division of, of, of the state of human nature. But act and he very general used the idea of to overcome nature and didn't specify which nature should be overcome to be conquered. But obviously, this nature should be our current nature, the wounded nature, the nature wounded by Adam's sin. Now we have seen um, Pantoja's, uh, Pantoja's teaching on, overcome hum uh, on overcoming human nature. And this idea, is formulated in a more uh, radical way, I would say I use the word radical way, by Eleni in 1631. Here is uh, his uh, dialogue with uh, uh, Chinese Catholic. After a while, the cloud of believers went home. When Yun Jian had prepared a meal, I used the occasion to ask for, the, for instruction, saying, in helping to build the church, I may have made a slight contribution, but I still, uh, but I, uh, but I still unable to subdue the sin of gluttony. So now the context, the question is how to conquer the sin of gluttony, eat too much, uh, like 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 good food. The question is how to overcome sin. Now, uh, Eleni's answer uh, is, is interesting. The master said, said, has said that following human nature is called the way. This is the Confucian axiom uh, on, on, on human nature. But I rather would say subduing human nature is called the way. Xing zhi wei dao, then trans, transformed to be ke xing zhi wei dao. Uh, but at present, the nature of man is no more what originally was. Again, original sin. Yeah. How could we realize the way without subduing it? So two points I would like to highlight here. First is uh, Eleni's statement is, was formulated in a way that more strikingly contrasts with the Confucian axiom. 
axiom of following human nature is called the way, not like uh, uh, the Pantoja. He, he made it not so directly. And the second point is the question is about how to overcome sin, how to overcome selfish desire, bad desire. The answer is put on how to overcome human nature. So again, for him, you if you want to overcome your selfish desires, what you should go is go back to the origin that is your human nature, your wounded human nature to overcome it. So this is the idea of uh, Eleni. So now we have seen the proposition of overcoming human nature in these two Jesuits. But we still need to think another question. Uh, overcoming human nature, is it a dominant theme in Catholic theology, in early modern Catholic theology? I tried to locate this phrase in Thomas Aquinas Opera, but only find one use of vincitu natura virtutibus. That means our nature is conquered by virtues. He didn't say overcome nature, okay? He just said our nature can be conquered by virtues. And his teacher, Albert the Great, also he used the phrase like overcome nature in the context of discussing how our lady was preserved by God. Because it is by grace, our lady's nature was conquered. So this is the usage of this uh, phrase like uh, vincit natura, overcome nature in theologians, um, um, in, the, uh, in, in theologians in the Middle Ages. Um, according to my research or according to my understanding, overcoming nature um, is not a, a dominant theme in Catholic or we say domestic tradition, because usually we don't say, see theologians to say we should overcome nature, overcome our human nature, because it can lead to some ambiguity, because it is only the wounded nature should be healed. If we use Thomas Aquinas' words, he didn't say our wounded nature, our wounded nature should be overcome. He should say our wounded nature should be healed yeah? uh, and elevated by grace. This is the way proposed by Thomas Aquinas. So <clears throat> we see here Thomas Aquinas also followed the uh, very famous medieval um, theological principle that grace does not destroy nature, but uh, make it perfect. Grace, make, uh, grace makes nature perfect. This is the idea which is very familiar to, I think, most Catholics. And this is the reason why a lot of Protestants would say Catholic are uh, Pelagians. Uh, uh, <clears throat> so, you, for Catholic theology, we say that grace does not destroy nature and make it more perfect. And in the Catholic theology, also in St. Thomas theology, there's idea of image of God. Even though we lost, we have lost uh, original justice, we lost the supernatural gifts, we are still the image of God. That's a very positive way of understanding human nature, right? And what we should do is to have this image of God to be restored through Christ's grace. Okay. So I think in Catholic theology, we usually have quite positive understanding of our human nature. So we see we are the image of God. Our nature would, will, will not be destroyed by grace. Our nature will be elevated by grace and healed by grace. So why these two Jesuits propose such a idea of overcoming nature? I think apart from the sources uh, in the uh, Catholic theology, uh, we should look at <clears throat> the, uh, the intellectual background in China, in Ming Dynasty. Oh, one topic I should, I would like to uh, mention here 
is the new exegesis of overcoming self in the 16th century new Confucianism. Now, in the school of the mind, some followers of Wang Yangming questioned Zhu Xi's interpretation of overcoming self. And they think that we should not overcome our body. What we should do is to extend ourselves. So they want to, um, uh, or say, throw away the idea of overcoming the selfish desire of the body because for them it's too negative. Uh, uh, example like uh, Zhou Shouyi, he's a disciple of Wang Yangming. <clears throat> he used another text from Lun Yu to, uh, to, to interpreting Ke Ji. And for him, Confucius to overcome oneself and return to priority is humanity is no other than the cultivation of oneself in reverential carefulness. So overcome, so ke ji, or say master oneself or overcome oneself is not overcome bodily desire. It's more about the cultivation of oneself in reverential carefulness. Or we say xiu ji yi jing, that's another phrase from Lun Yu. <clears throat> so now in this new exegesis, the focus of moral effort is shifting from overcoming desire, overcoming the selfish desire to the cultivation of one's moral potency. This is a new development. Now this new development conquered with some other uh, new phenomen phenomenon in neo Confucianism. Um, and the, the historian of New Confucianism today divided Wang Yangming school into three branches. The first is the left wing school, some uh, or we sometimes they call the Taizhou school. And the right wing is Gui Ji Pai in Chinese, uh, Quietist school. And the, the third one is Orthodox school, cultivation school, <coughs> sometimes called Zheng Tong Pai. Uh, or sometimes they call the xiu zheng pai, uh, cultivation, because they emphasize need to cultivate, to emphasize spiritual cultivation. So it's called cultivation school. Now we will, we will not uh, have more discussions of these schools, but one point I, I, I hear I would like to emphasize is, in the case of Wang Yangming, he already uh, made some very, uh, we say, uh, quite radical, uh, understanding of how we can achieve perfection. Wang Yangming once uh, taught that for people of sharp intelligence, people of sharp intelligence, uh, Shanggeng, uh, they have Shanggeng Zhi Ren, as soon as they fully realize the original substance of the mind, they will immediately apprehend the moral cultivation. So there's for this sharp people of sharp intelligence, there is no need to make a lot of efforts in moral or spiritual cultivation. You can immediately suddenly understand the original substance of mind, xin zhi ben ti. When you immediately suddenly realize what is original substance of the mind in you, you are not asked to do a lot of uh, work, or we say put a lot of efforts in moral cultivation. So in this left-wing school, or we say Taizhou school, <coughs> more, uh, the general idea is that they uh, prioritize the immediate enlightenment of the original substance of mind while ignoring making special effort to desire good and following the moral rules. What they seek is the immediate enlightenment of the original substance of mind, the Xin Zhi Ben Ti, you immediately understood it, and you can find it in your daily life, in your daily action. So there is no need for you to put a lot of efforts to do the moral, um, the moral cultivation, like like Zhu Jing, something like uh, being reverential, being uh, being cautious, and being apprehensive. Uh, no, you don't need to take these efforts. And that one of the interesting. A uh, statement made by people of this school would say that the people feeding the street are all sages. Okay? Everybody has a great potential. 
to be a sage. Okay? What you need to is just to seek the enlightenment of your mind. Now, in Taizhou School, the founder of Taizhou School, Wang Gen, uh, he emphasized a lot on joy, quiet. He thought the quiet joy is the characteristic of the original substance of the mind. Quiet is just xin zhi ben ti. And to learn, xue, is to enjoy, because learning is the effortless operation of ordinary intelligence in everyday life. So to hear, here again, effortless operation of ordinary intelligence. And again, in everyday life, you cannot reach this enlightenment when you put away your everyday life. And this operation is effortless. Okay? It's not difficult. No, so now it's go back again to the debate between um, uh, Zhu Xi and uh, Lu Xiangshan. Okay, Lu Xiangshan and Zhu 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 Xi that debate. Okay, for Lu Xiangshan, his approach is uh, Jian Yi Gong Fu, very simple effort. Okay, so he is uh, when we we usually say Lu Wang Xin Xue, Lu Xiangshan and the Wang Yangming, they are of the of the same school, we usually put them together. So these are the followers of Wang Yangming. So they will say that all the things about Jian Yi Gong, very simple effort. But for Zhu Xi and Lu Xiangshan accused Zhu Xi's approach as Zhi Li Shi Ye, everything you would like to a lot, put a lot of efforts in achieving perfection. You everything you did is very is broken. Uh, so in this case, it's the same. Um, joy lets nature and through joy, innate knowledge will be manifested freely through the self. So the self has the potency, the unlimited potency to achieve perfection. How you can say you want to conquer it? What you need to do is to make it free, to let it go and extend it. And, and then the scholar of, 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 of this uh, Taizhou school, Wang Dong. Uh, he has a very close relation with Wang Gen. And uh, he, he said, uh, he gave us a very interesting observation. Cha si fang yu, sheng meng cong lai wu ci jiao fa. It's very interesting. The sages never taught examination of savage desire and overcoming them. Uh, for him, Confucius, all the sages of in the Confucian tradition never taught that we should examine our selfish desire. And they never taught us we should overcome them, overcome this desire. That's a very interesting observation. Now, this school was very popular at the end of the 16th century. Uh, if we still remember Li, uh, Li Zhou, sometimes very close to this close to this school, he had a very good relationship with Matteo Ricci. Matteo Ricci mentioned him. Um, but this school is popular in, uh, in the, uh, the end of the 16th century, but still very controversial because of this idea like Cha Si Fang Yu, Shen Men Cong Lai, Wu Zi Gong Fu. And when the Confucian scholars would like to reflect it on the reason of the uh, overthrow of Ming Dynasty, they blamed these scholars and they thought that this scholar's teaching led, <coughs> at least partially, uh, led to the collapse of Ming Dynasty. Now we see they are very popular and controversial. We can make the, it's quite sure that all the Jesuits, when they were very active in China and they make connection with uh, famous scholars, they must know something about this teaching, okay? And they made some influence on, uh, on, on, on the development of the Jesuit's idea on human nature. The, this controversial um, uh, Taizhou school actually um, it was intellectually mentioned by a, uh, a person called Chen Liangcai. Why I mentioned Chen Liangcai? Because Chen Liangcai prepared a preface for Pantoha's uh, Qike. He wrote a preface for Qike, seven, the seven victories. 
And he intellectually mentioned the, the idea very close to Taizhou School and criticized this school. So we said that there's a Confucian scholars also engaged in the criticism of the school. But in, if we look at the preface made by uh, this Chen Liangcai, we see that he partially agree with the Jesuit. That's on, we need to put a lot of moral efforts, but partially the Jesuits did not reach agreement with this Confucian uh, Chen Liangcai because for the, for the Jesuit, for the Jesuit, our mind or our, our mind or our nature is not the same as the principle of heaven, not the same as God. Now we, now I would like to make some <clears throat> conclusion on our study of uh, the teaching of to overcome nature in these two uh, Jesuits, Pantoha, Pantoha and Aleni. Now we see here, there is some Catholic intellectual source in their formation of the idea of to overcome nature. Mainly it's about human nature wounded by original sin. This can be the internal source, the internal source in the uh, internal uh, Catholic source. Another point uh, I would like to say is uh, why the Pantoha mentioned this to overcome nature in an explanation of the origin of human race. Because different from Chikhe, the seven victories, this work is a treatise exploring Christian doctrines. It is more fitting for him to talk about a topic like original sin, talk about the creation of human beings. So it's a more theological work. It's a, it's a work more focused on theology. And in the case of Aleni, we all see that when the Chinese Catholic asked him how to overcome our sins, his answer is focused on how we need to overcome our human nature. So here we, here we see that for these two Jesuits, they saw the insufficiency of developing virtues. So developing virtue, practice virtue is good. It, uh, if we use the words of uh, Matteo Ricci, this is the good of the goodness of virtue, which helps to increase the goodness of human nature. But this practice developing virtue would not be sufficient in this case, because the fundamental reason of our dis dis the disorder in us comes from our human nature. So if we want to overcome our sins, more fundamentally, we should overcome our nature. So in this way, they, if, if we follow the division of supernatural order and the natural order uh, in Catholic theology, here they touch the supernatural order, uh, which is above the order which purely based on human reason. Because in the work like, uh, the, in the work like Seven Victories, uh, if you are not informed by God's revelation, you can still practice, uh, practice, practice uh, virtues, practice overcoming your desire. But in this, but in this supernatural order, okay, we need revelation to understand the origin of human beings and understand how our human nature was corrupted. So this is all about something in an order which we call the supernatural order, which is not based pure on, on the pure human reason. Now, the, um, the over, apart from the Catholic source, okay, the over optimistic understanding of the potential of human nature in Confucianism, particularly like we see in Taito school, also contributed to their proposition of to overcome human nature because uh, Taizhou school, scholars of Taizhou school, which popular at the time, they challenged the moral convention and the spiritual cultivation. And they put this, this popular idea, teachings, pushed the Jesuits to see that we need to emphasize that what is the problem of we cannot do good. And they trace back to the idea of human nature 
apart from calling for overcome our uh, desires. Now, this point leads us to the final thing I would like to say. For these two Jesuits, what they would like to do is to provide an alternative to the Confucian axiom to follow nature is the way. So in this case, when you want to overcome your desire, overcome your sins, you must overcome your human nature. Then you can achieve perfection. That, that's, <clears throat> this is their idea. And their idea is proposed in the Jesuit axiom to, for, uh, to subdue, to overcome nature is the way. And it indicates this, uh, the approach of these two Jesuits that their approach is not a simple accommodation of Christianity to Confucianism. Okay. That's, I read somewhere, they said Pantoha sometimes was quite conservative. Maybe this is the reason. They, didn't, they did not just accommodate the Christianity to Confucianism. What they would like to do is to find the way to help Chinese people to understand the Christianity. And it leads me to the last slide of this fresco from St. Ignatius Church in Rome. In this fresco, we see that uh, at the corner, uh, left corner, actually there's a place that says Asia. So, so for the Jesuits, they came to China is not to simply appreciate Confucianism. Okay? For them, for the Jesuits in the early modern period, what they would like to do is to elevate the souls of Asian people with Ignatius to Christ who is in heaven. Thank you.